Hey, what's up, guys? I've got a bunch of stuff laid out here. <clears throat> I've seen a lot of people asking about, you know, diversity on the Dominator goggles. Uh, there's there's quite a bit of information out there. Uh, most of what, I mean, everything, pretty much what I found was on RC Groups. Uh, Bruce Simpson from RC Model Reviews did a very cheap uh, diversity system setup. And I'm not real sure about exactly how it took off or where it went from there, but I know that pretty much it, it, there, it there's got a, there's there's a large following behind it anyway. A lot of people have taken a lot of time and really done some cool stuff. Uh, for me, you know, I'm, I started in this stuff about a year ago, so I'm no engineer, but I can follow directions fairly well. I got on RC Group, started poking around, and they have blueprints for these little boards. And I cannot remember right off the top of my head where I got them printed out at. But you get the blueprint, you send it off to this website. I will have links in the description to everything. But you send it off to this website, and I think it was like $7.70, and they printed out three of these boards. Uh, you can already see on this one I've got a couple components already soldered in. But uh, it, it comes just, you know, it's a flat board. Everything... All I had to do was upload a file and hit submit, pay some money. And it took about two or three weeks, and I got got the boards in. While the boards were coming in, you can see all this other pile of goodies. Got some resistors, uh, two different color LEDs. I've got you know, pretty much the links I'll give you in the description. It's going to have everything here. 4.7K ohm, 330, 47K uh, yeah, 1M, got some capacitors, and then these two chips here. And uh, I got most of everything, I believe. Actually, I think I got everything on eBay. And I tried it with the good old uh, Next Wave receivers, but I could not get the uh, oh RSSI pulled off of those. So I started looking around, and you can make your own receivers as well and just the same as before man they got all kinds of walkthroughs reviews on how to do the receivers as well but i was already kind of in it as deep as i was and i didn't want to have to build two receivers so i started looking online and you have these flying lemon receivers I bought two of those. They're pretty much like the TBS receivers you see. Except if you look right here, you see RSSI. It's got a nice little pad right in the front. It'd be nice and easy to get to. So I got two of these. You see Flying Lemon, uh, 40 channel, 5.8 receiver for four fat shark. So they're just, you know, plug and play. And another cool thing is I got the package today. Had two of these receivers, and each box had a little 3D printed Flying Lemon quadcopter keychain. And that, I think I was probably more excited to receive the little keychains than it was the, the receivers I've been waiting about three weeks on. Uh, the receivers did come from Poland. That's where uh, where they're located at. And, I mean, it's you know typical time you expect from Poland. But anyway, so we have our two receivers. First things first we need to do is get everything else soldered onto our little board. And if you look on the board, it actually has everything labeled. So these chips, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll list everything in the description. CD4066 and LM324N. And underneath these chips, it tells you which direction they need to go as far as where the little divot's at on the bottom. Uh, LED1, LED2. 47k resistor you got your capacitor capacitor uh, video out here uh, vcc and ground off your battery rssi1 or one rssi2 and video one video two up here at the top so video ends rssis and pretty much all we're going to do 
is when you put this together, I mean, it's it's pretty simple. You order the parts, you see where it's labeled, you solder it in. Uh, it don't get really any simpler than that. Where I had to take time to actually figure out what to do was when I went to open up the goggles. When I went to open the goggles up, there really wasn't anything that I could find that actually broke it down and step by step said, you know, do this, do that, solder this here, solder this there. So I had to kind of poke around with it and I got it, like I said, working when I would provide the voltage to switch the receivers. Uh, the RSSI, like I said, didn't work on those. So we're going to kind of start over from scratch. I do have a small ribbon cable already soldered into place inside the goggles, but I will take them back apart, walk you through what I did inside the goggles and where I have different cables ran to. So we're going to start off by soldering everything back on to my little board. And at this point, what I'll do is just a little so camera magic. I'll stop recording, get everything soldered into place, and come back. If you need to learn how to solder, I do not suggest doing this right off the start. Uh, look up some soldering videos, go through, get, get, get your uh, skills up a little bit before you attempt this. It's not really tiny soldering, but you are opening up you know, a couple hundred dollar pair of goggles and you don't want to risk breaking those so we'll see you again here shortly all right <clears throat> we're back so you can see everything is soldered on it you've got all your resistors two capacitors uh, the one m and another resistor at the top both leds pretty straightforward easy to hook up so like i said before video out power ground RSSI ports and your video in ports, you know, two of each because you got two receivers. Uh, now on the RC groups thing, they do have a smaller board like this that you utilizes both sides of the board for your different components and things. And they also have one that instead of having a two-way diversity set up like this, it's a three-way. So you can have, you know, your two directional antennas plus your lobes and be even that much better but honestly i didn't see any of that until i'd already had these made so i just went ahead and got these uh went went through with this and uh yeah so that's where we're at so next step is going to be to open up our goggles uh, again i'm just going to kind of go through this with you uh only because you know it's only three screws and it's not really much to it but i was kind of nervous when i first did it and i figured why not you know so i'll just uh i'll speed through this on the video and if you don't want to see this i'll uh, have a link for you to skip through uh, if you do want to see it i'll catch you after we get it apart back again so you can see I've got the plates off both sides took the fan plate off the back and then the three screws so on your head tracker side you can see I've got this big mangle of wires this is from where I tried it with the other uh, receivers and pretty much failed so that's kind of what we're gonna go over now uh, to get them apart I just kind of work from the edges. There's not really anything clipped together, but there is stuff on the top and bottom connected by little wires, and you don't want to break anything. So now, just let them fall apart. So you see how everything's kind of connected on the top and the bottom. What we want to work with 
is going to be this board here. So this is where, if you see on the front, this is where your module actually plugs into. So we need to have connections for our second module coming off the back of the pins that your first module plugs into. So all we're going to do is kind of split everything open here. If you grab this board, it's got two little grooves that it's plugged down into. Just kind of rock it back and forth. It'll slide right out. Allow you to work on it. Now, when you're looking at yours, this colorful little ribbon cable is not going to be there. This is what I hooked up before. And if you look at any, any receiver, or what should be any receiver, I know the new ones I just got from Flying Lemon and these Next Waves are labeled. CS3, 2, 1, video, your audios, ground, ground, and 5 volt. So on these, what we need to carry over is going to be your CS3, CS2, and CS1. These have your channel selects. So you need to have channel selects running from those three to wherever you're planning on putting your second receiver. I have this small ribbon cable ran through coming out my head tracker side. And so what I did is I have, I think, it's been a while. So green I have a CS1. And it looks like... I have purple as CS3 and blue as CS2. And obviously, I've got yellow down here on my video. So that's all I have going over. So the video line is, if I had a module plugged into the front, video would just be feeding straight from the module into the goggles. All right, so whenever we do this now, the module that I'm going to have plugged in to the primary slot. So the one that actually plugs inside the goggles, I've got to go in and remove the video pin. So the video out pin right here, I'm actually going to cut that off. We're not going to use that. If you look down here, I've got two wires that I had cut a slot out, just a little tiny, little tiny divot here. I cut a little slot out, had those two wires running through this little slot. One will be soldered onto the video, and one will be soldered onto RSSI. So what I will do is I'll have one soldered on the video after I cut the wire, or after I cut the pin off, solder a cable to video, solder a, vid or a wire to RSSI, and then they are going to come over and it will be RSSI 1 and video 1. So my first primary receiver, everything else is going to plug in as normal, except for the video. And the other two wires are going to come over for RSSI 1 and video 1. So now, <clears throat> the next thing we would have to do is, like I said, we had the cables soldered into the back of the board, CS 1, 2, and 3. They are going to come around through the actual goggles and pop out this other side. That's where I'm putting my second receiver. I'll have to solder those cables, CS3, 2, and 1. So those are just going to have the three channel cables soldered directly onto this board. And then just like we did the, the first board with the two little cables coming out the side, I've got to solder one on the video and solder one on the RSSI. And then those two cables, the RSSI and the video, will be going to our diversity board to video two and RSSI two. So that's, you know, pretty simple. Number one, primary receiver plugged into the port. Two additional cables coming from the video and the RSSI in to video one and RSSI one second receiver on the side a cable from video and RSSI to RSSI 2 and video 2 so we have two inputs and then now we have a single video out that will be going for our yellow cable that is back over here that's soldered into the primary back side of our module 
So the video out. So all you're doing is you got you got your two receivers both into your diversity module and one single output. So what we'll do is I'll leave the camera on for this next part, go through and start soldering everything together and leave it hooked up. One other thing I do want to touch on is when I was trying to before, I was running the power in the ground right off of the power and ground pins on the back side of your module board. Uh, during my troubleshooting, I wasn't sure if I was having power fluctuations or if I had some kind of other issue. So what I did is over here, right on my barrel connector uh, input, I soldered in a little five volt uh, Pololu connector and just have power coming straight off of uh, Pololu or however you pronounce it. So that's where everything's coming here. So in this big wad of mess that I have to clean up, I've got my three channel wires that's gonna be onto my second receiver, the video out that will be going back into the back side of my module board and the power and ground that are coming off my barrel connector and the power and RSSI for my first receiver. So I'm gonna stop talking and get to putting things back together. So when I see you again, we should have everything at least able to be tested.
All right, guys. Figured I'd take a quick stop right here. Just make sure everybody's still on the same page. Uh, all I've done so far is we had already had our small ribbon cable connected to our channels here. Run it across. The blue, green, and purple lines went into the CS1, 2, and 3 on our secondary receiver. I got a cable from our RSSI port and our video going into video 2 and RSSI 2. Also during that, I depinned our second uh, receiver. No reason to have them on there. So I just depinned those. And also something I forgot to mention was we needed to be able to run power and ground to our second receiver as well. So if you were paying attention, our main voltage line coming off of our barrel connector, I just doubled it up plugged them both into the voltage and ground on the diversity board and ran, a sec ran the second lines off of that onto our receiver. So after we get done testing, the way this should mount up is I'll just flip it over, kind of line them up. I'll put uh, liquid electrical tape between them and kind of stuff everything in together. Leave it lined out like this, roughly, something like that anyway. And long story short, we'll take some, uh, I'll probably put it on the back. But anyway, we'll take some uh, heat shrink, shrink it all together, and tape it on to the, uh, the goggles themselves. So now, next thing we're going to do is take our second cable for our video and RSSI from our first receiver and just lay it through the goggles just to make sure we're still you know running running fairly well and just double check for any kind of cuts i'll just replace this line while we're at it but anyway we'll uh, we'll run one through through the goggles solder it up to the video and rssi on this board and put it on the diversity board and we're ready to test so i will speed through this part again and see you shortly So everything should be connected right. Should be. I'm not going to say it is because then I'll burn something up. So it should be connected right. We have the video and the RSSI coming off of here into video RSSI 1. We have video RSSI coming off of our second receiver and the video RSSI 2. We have voltage regulated into our diversity board and as well into our second uh, receiver. Primary receiver, still no changes on the voltage, just pulling it off just like normal. 
our channel lines coming from CS32 and 1 or run over to CS32 and 1. So everything should be ready to power up and test. Uh, I have my QAV210 sitting beside me, already plugged in with the transmitter. I did power this up and just made sure I had the receivers on the correct band. Uh, if you look on the front, you have a button that just says band. Press it, you're gonna hear a series of beeps or just one beep, and that in turn tells you which, uh, which band you're on. You just have to look up the manual, honestly, I'm not sure. I just went through, you know, heard the beeps until I got on to band one. Both receivers are on band one. Uh, kind of put everything together here. Like I said, I've already got a transmitter transmitting. And let me reset my ESCs. Sorry about that, I got a two minute timer on it. So we'll plug this in. And we should, sure enough, sure do have video here. Let's see if I can get it into the camera. I don't have a monitor set up or anything, but just a little bit of proof that, you know, we do have video coming through right now. So what we want to see is if it's actually switching. So a good indication, obviously, is our LEDs. You know, you, depending on where my hand's at, blocks the signal, receives the signal type thing. But you can see we do have... It, it is switching between the two receivers. So you know, I'll put an antenna on this one and it should make one LED stay solid. So yeah, pretty much quit switching there. We'll take the antenna back off, put it on our primary, and again, pretty much stop switching there. So that's good. It's doing exactly what we want it to do. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a success. All I'm going to do now, you don't have to be around for this part, is I'm going to open everything up, go through on my connections, put a little bit of uh, liquid electrical tape just to reinforce the different connections, uh, paint up my boards just where they're going to be close to touching, and put everything back together. So I will turn the camera off, put everything together, and I will see you shortly. I'm going to cut in here real quick before uh, we sign off. Just want to show you <clears throat> when you connect this C1, 2, and 3 on both sides of your receivers, you're, uh, you can use your channel buttons on your goggles. So if you watch, there's a little LED on both receivers. I don't know if we'll be able to see it in the video. You can see... Now you can see a reflection on my hand from the other one. When I change the channels, it changes the channels of both receivers as we go through. It's got a nice little uh, beeper for both receivers, so as you're changing channels, you know, not only are you going to be able to count, but you're going to be able to listen to the beeps and tell which channel you're on as well. Just thought that was a pretty neat little feature. I wanted to cover that before we uh, ended the video. Uh, finished product. So, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know, it's not exactly the prettiest thing, but it is functional. I mean, I put uh, clear heat, heat shrink through uh, or covered both of them in one, the diversity board and the second receiver. Got it all put back together. It's got the blue and green LEDs here on the side. And I don't know, like I said, it's functional. Is it pretty? Of course not. But I did it myself, and it really didn't cost much. I bought the, uh, the two receivers for uh, $29 a piece. Like I said, you can make those yourself. Uh, the diversity board, I bought enough to do three full boards. And there was, I don't know, enough. Uh, oh, enough resistors and parts to make I think 50 to 100 boards but uh, when it boils down to it I mean it's just a couple dollars per board so I mean really if you're wanting if you're wanting diversity in your goggles and you kind of are decent enough at soldering and can follow directions it's a way to go uh, 
Fat Shark, I think, is supposed to be releasing a diversity receiver. It's a plug and play. But last I heard, it's supposed to be on March. Of course, you have the little Forge modules. They're a little expensive, but they're uh, they're pretty awesome for what they are. And I'll have links to those as well. But anyway, guys, if you got any questions, leave a comment. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. I would appreciate subscribers. I appreciate every one of you. Uh, it's been a pretty awesome couple months. Look in the description for the links to everything. If there's anything I could do to help you, you know, feel free to ask. Uh, the RC Groups page, uh, you know, that's going to be probably the best place to look for help. But uh, anyway, if you try this, I hope you have a success with it. And uh, we'll catch y'all on the next one. Yeah.